Hi, I'm a big fan of Inio Asano. Goodnight Pum Pum is one of my favourite series of all time. Solar Nin is a fantastic one shot, and Downfall is an extreme depression fest. Oh, and Dead Dead Demons is on my list to read this year. So, of course I was excited to hear about Inio Asano's brand new series, which is a breath of fresh air for him. Not only is Mujina Into the Deep doing something new for Asano, it's also doing something interesting for the manga industry. Let's talk about it. Mujina Into the Deep follows our main character, a young girl who is living in the sprawling metropolis of Tsukumo. While she looks a lot like our normal Inio Asano protagonists, this time there's one big difference, she's an assassin. Magina Into the Deep is Inyo Asano's very first action series, and pun intended, it sprinted out of the gate. Throughout the first chapter we are treated to amazing action panels, with my biggest praise going to the smooth and slick movement. The main character wields a katana so clearly is going to be a close quarters fighter, and we see this throughout the chapter with swordplay playing a key part in the panels. The fights are clean and the traversal and movement in this first chapter is also very fast paced, and it has this kind of parkour style. This links directly into the character's costume design, as it seems her boots and clothing are made to withstand heavy falls and the other pressures of free running. For a manga who usually develops mostly cinematic scenes with very little movement, the action elements of this chapter were done really well. I found the fights easy to track, and the movement, while stylized with that Inio Asano flair, was still realistic and satisfying, which is something that I really enjoy out of an action-based series. In the first chapter, we also get some small hints towards the world building of the series, such as a strange drug slash device that the chapter's antagonist uses on himself, and also a signpost that points towards a dystopian vibe for the city of Tsukumo, the sign itself detailing something to do with humans and their rights. My assumptions for this is that we are faced with a society that is split between those with rights and those without. I'm predicting we're going to see themes of segregation and discrimination, with the antagonist of the series potentially taking advantage of the people without rights, and being punished for this by the assassins. I believe the antagonists are what are being referred to as Mujina, which I did a little bit of research research into. <laughs> this word is actually the Japanese word for badger, which upon further reading within Japanese folklore are frequently depicted as deceptive, shape-shifting yokai, or demons. Now to me, this sounds like a pretty solid idea for a set of antagonists, ignoring the badger part. <laughs> The art style is so clearly Inio Asano, despite the change in genre. His staple facial feature design is still here, with some characters looking slightly caricatured and the main character looking a lot like his other protagonists. As you can probably tell, I enjoyed the first chapter quite a lot. However, what I found most interesting was the discussion on how Asano created this chapter, as detailed on his personal Twitter account. I'm going to read you a translated tweet. All the backgrounds and some action scenes in the first chapter were drawn using the city and mannequins created with Unreal Engine 5. Now, this Twitter post basically suggests slash confirms that Asano and his team are using Unreal Engine 5 to assist them with the creation of this manga. They are using this to create images slash photographs that they can then trace around for the backgrounds, which is streamlining the more laborious part of the art process. Now this is clearly an extremely efficient way to work on background art slash character design, as you can create a scene full of people and then trace around each of them changing their facial features slightly to match the style of the manga. However, where I think it is most innovative is in the usage of the mannequins. Obviously, Asano hasn't done an action manga before, so this allows them to create proportions, body positions, and poses that match the vibe before committing to the drawing process, which in turn allows them to be a lot more experimental as they're not wasting time drawing and instead are able to create a mannequin 
mannequin and then move it and change it to their needs. Now you would think that this would mean they are going to create a product that maintains the same level of detail but is delivered in a smaller time frame. In my opinion, in a world bridging on massive changes to the way we see art due to the influence of AI, I think this is a really interesting way to see technology being used to influence a final product and a manga specifically. As far as I'm aware, Magina is the first manga to actually utilize this. And seeing the side-by-side -side pictures of how this works begs the question as to why it isn't used more often. Using graphic engines and AI may be able to further streamline processes within the manga industry, but does it take away from the creativity? What do you guys think? Hey everyone, thank you for watching. I know this reaction to the first chapter of Magina Into the Deep is really late, but at least it's here. <laughs> what did you guys think of the first chapter and what do you think of the technologies that Asano and his team are using to create this? I think it's such an interesting discussion and I want to hear you guys' thoughts down below. While you're down there, you might as well like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted every single time that I upload. And if you want to pick some manga up for yourself, like some Inio Asano works, you can do so using the links in the description to write stuff, Forbidden Planet and Blackwells. Rest in peace, book depository. If you guys have enjoyed this video and you're not quite fed up of seeing my face, you can click one of these videos on the left and the right of me to watch another Nerd Lounge video. If you do, I'll see you over there. And if not, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.